So far, I've introduced the idea of a language model and neural language models. Today, we get into the attention mechanism, a method that was originally created to improve the performance of recurrent neural networks, but eventually gave rise to transformers. Up until now, I've mainly talked about text generation, which is where I give a prompt and ask the language model to generate text in response to this prompt. What I want to do is talk to you about a seemingly different task, machine translation, or translating between languages. You see, machine translation works pretty similar to text generation. Instead of having one type of RNN cell, we have two types, an encoder and a decoder. The purpose of each of them is what do you think they would be? The encoder encodes the meaning of the sentence into a vector, which is stored in the last encoder's hidden state, which the decoder takes and outputs the translated sentence. The idea here is that the encoded state is a universal representation of meaning across languages. For each decoder state, we simply take the output of the previous cell and feed it into the next in order to generate the translated sentence. A big problem faced with RNNs is its inability to hold lots of information. This is especially a problem here, since the last cell has to hold all the information about the sentence. Its final hidden state acts as a bottleneck. It must represent absolutely everything about the meaning of the source text, since it's the only thing the decoder knows about the source text before it's actually decoding the text. To this, the attention mechanism was created. The idea is, is for each cell of the decoder, we give it information about each of the encoder states. This would solve the bottleneck problem, since we're now accessing all the encoder cells at each step. Let's see how we can do this. Let's examine one decoder cell. I'll call this decoder's hidden state S. I'll also label all the encoder hidden states H1 to H4. My goal now is to see how similar this decoder state is to all the encoder hidden states. The way we do this is by comparing S to each of the encoder hidden states one by one and computing a number that tells me how similar each of the two vectors are. This is typically done with a dot product. The idea is that I want to use this measure of similarity to determine how important each of the encoder hidden states are to this decoder state. The terminology is that these similarity scores select which encoder states the decoder attends to. So now I have a list of numbers where each index i tells me how similar the current decoder state is to the ith encoder state. Given this list of numbers, I want to find a way to use them as a measure for how important each of the encoder hidden states are. The way we do this is by converting this list of numbers into a probability distribution. What I mean is, I want to convert this list of numbers into a list of positive numbers such that the sum equals 1. These numbers should have some representation of how large the numbers are relative to each other. I would want the largest value to have a value closer to 1. The way this is done is by first exponentiating all the values in this list. The effect of this magnifies the difference between numbers, so if there was a really large value, it would push it way closer to 1. Then, we normalize, dividing by the sum of the exponentiated values. We call this the softmax function. So, going back to the attention mechanism, we convert the similarity score list into a probability distribution with the softmax function. I can then weigh each of these hidden states by the softmax function and sum them up. For the final equation, I'm introducing a new matrix H. This matrix just contains all the encoder hidden states in each of the columns. By doing S transpose H, I get a vector containing all the scores between each of the decoder hidden states 
and all the encoder hidden states. Then, I do a softmax over this and take the ith element. What this leaves me with is a vector that contains information from each of the encoder hidden states that are relevant to the current decoder state. I'll call this the attention vector. I then just join the current decoder hidden state with the attention vector and call it the new hidden state. Repeat, and you get a much better translation model. I want to give you a little bit of intuition as to what attention is doing in the first place. Let's say I'm trying to translate from English to French. On the x-axis, I've written out the English sentence, and on the y-axis, I've written out the French sentence. The attention scores are represented by the pixel values. A lighter pixel value would imply a high attention score, and a darker pixel value would imply a lowered attention score. This image tells me that the attention scores sort of direct a mapping between words in English and words in French. For example, the word economic in English gets the highest score when compared to economique in French, which makes sense. What I find interesting is how it's able to capture the more intricate mappings. For example, the phrase a été in French corresponds to the English word was, which we can see by the two highest scores for was being a and été. It's even able to capture the tense of verbs. If I looked at signed, it's mapped to été signé. Here, été is the past participle, and signed is in past tense. Here are some more translations from the original 2015 paper on the attention mechanism. Take a look, some of them are pretty solid. But it still suffered from a few problems RNNs had. More specifically, we still needed to compute all the previous states before moving to the current state, which means that I can't compute states in parallel. The next era of language models, transformers, originated from a paper called Attention is All You Need. And well, that's exactly what they did. The issue with recurrent neural networks was that the recurrence removed any ability of parallelism. So what if I just remove the recurrence, but keep just the attention model? The actual model has a bunch of intricacies. For example, I framed the entire video as modeling next word prediction, but doing this is actually quite annoying due to the fact that there are so many next words. I'll leave these concepts to 3 blue one Brown's video, so do give it a watch after this one. Today, I introduced the attention mechanism. The idea was, if I'm translating between languages, I compute how similar each of the decoder hidden states are to the encoder states. I then use these scores as weights to construct a context vector, which I just apply to my hidden state and move on, as normal. Beyond language modeling, there are so many things to talk about in NLP, so let me know which ones you'd like to see a video on in the comments below. Thanks for watching.